Hi, I'm Jason Sean Bennett, and it's an absolute privilege and honor to be talking to you here today. I've got so much to discuss around healthy aging and longevity and the centenarian cultures and genetics and all kinds of things. Uh, so I've really tried to look at how much time I've got, which is about half an hour or so between 20 and 30 minutes, and how can I impart the most information in the shortest amount of time. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll give you a little bit of sense of who I am and where I come from and my own background. Uh, then we'll look at genetics versus genetic expression, which is really key because so many people think that their problems are all about their genetics. Actually, most things are not about genetics at all. So we'll talk about that. We'll also go into the centenarian cultures, who are the longest lived cultures in the world. So all the cultures around the world that live 30 to 40 years longer than we do and without the disease and the drugs that we have, what do they do and what are the little things we can pick up from them? and how can we behave in a way that gives us that kind of longevity with great health. We'll talk about that, and then we'll end up with the top 10 tips. So my top 10 tips for healthy longevity. And so hopefully that's a really good dose of information. Please forgive me if I talk too fast. I tend to get very passionate and enthusiastic and excited when I talk about health um, all over the world because uh, that's what I love to do the most. So in terms of my history, let's go right back to 1967 when I was born. Little Jason Sean Bennett. I was uh, in the womb for seven months when the doctors discovered that my mother had toxemia. And so they knew that I would, I, I would die if I was kept in the womb or mum would die if she kept me in. So they chopped me out and I was a little two pound nine bubba. I was chopped out at seven months gestation and I was put in an incubator, tubes put into me. And so for my first six weeks or so, I wasn't even able to be touched by my mum. I was just in the incubator, tubes being fed, uh, being lucky, very lucky to be kept alive. And my parents used to walk me around once I came out in a two pound butter basket, a little two pound butter basket, which they used to carry me around and uh, it shows you how small I was. My dad called me a little drowned rat. I was so tiny. So very, very unwell, very, very sick. And I then ended up developing asthma and hay fever. I ended up with flus and colds and bugs and viruses. I had really bad skin with acne and pimples. I had weight problems and bowel problems and digestion problems. Uh, but mostly it was the asthma and the hay fever and the allergies flus, bugs, you know, I caught every flu, every virus, every bug that went around, I caught it all the time. I was constantly sick. So I'd have medication to get up in the morning, I'd have medication through the day, and I'd have medication to go to bed at night. Uh, I was on daily drugs for 20 years, and when I say daily drugs, I mean Ventolin. I was on a Ventolin inhaler, 16 to 20 shots a day for 20 years. So I know what it's like to be on very heavy medication for a long period of time, in which you can't actually do anything without your medication. So I was very, very unwell for a long, long time. And I was constantly told it was genetic. It's hereditary. It's bad luck, son. Take the drugs. It's all you can do. There's nothing else we can do for you. Just take the drugs. And these were good doctors. They were doing the best they could. It's just that they couldn't actually fix me. And I had no idea that I could do anything about my illness. I didn't know that I could do anything about asthma or hay fever, particularly that I, give, I live in Auckland, which is the known hay fever capital of the whole universe. Uh, I didn't know that I could stop getting myself any flus, any viruses, any bugs, any, anything like that. Uh, I didn't realize that uh, I could cure my skin and have nice youthful skin. I didn't realize I could cure my weight problems and digest digestive problems. None of that was clear to me. In the 80s and the 70s, of course, we didn't have that kind of information. There was no Google to punch into to, to, to ask for advice. So what happened was I got to the age of 20 and I had this revelation where someone really challenged me about my health and I was about to become a father at the time. I became a father at 21. And we'll talk about my kids later on because I've always got to talk about my kids. But I became a father at 21 and someone really challenged me about what kind of father could I be if I was having to have medication just to get through the day, to get through the night and to wake up and go to sleep and all of that. And it was a really, really confronting moment for me because someone really made me realize that actually if I wanted anything to change, I actually had to inherently change myself. I had to change my behavior. I had to put in place new healthy habits. And of course, this was 1985, 1987 when I had this realization. And because there was no information available, no internet, no cell phones, nothing like that, I literally had to start reading books and experimenting on myself. So that's what I started doing. So I got to the age of 18, between 18 and 20 or so, and I started uh, studying diet, a lifestyle, fasting, centenarians, uh, and longevity and health. And I started reading any kind of book I could get my hands on. You know, what, what can I read that will give me a sense of longevity and health? How can I cure myself? Because up until that point, it really was, look, this is just bad luck. It's bad genetics, you're sick, you're just gonna have to deal with it. So I started studying, I started researching, I started growing wheatgrass, I started having 31 trays of wheatgrass outside my house and I would chop it every day and hand juice it. 
uh, I started doing fasting and enemas and fasting is such a fascinating topic and I teach fasting as well. Uh, you can look at that on jasonshawnbennett.com. have lots on fasting in there. And um, we could do another conversation about fasting another time, but we don't have time today. Uh, but I did regular fasting and I was doing enemas at home and I went onto a strict plant-based whole food diet back in 1985. So changed my diet completely to what now known, I guess, is a vegan diet. But I like to call it a plant-based whole food diet because mostly plants, mostly whole foods is where the trick is. And we'll talk about that when we get to the centenarians as well. So I went on to a plant-based whole food diet. I started studying health and longevity. Um, and after about five years of changing my behavior, strictly, you know, giving away the meat, giving away the alcohol, the coffee, all of that stuff, getting rid of all the junk food and only eating fresh plants and whole foods, regular fasting and smart lifestyle choices like going to bed earlier, doing yoga, meditation, mindfulness, a miracle happened. And it took about five years, but by the time I was 25, I'd cured everything. So all my illnesses by the time I was 25 were gone. And so I got well and it was 25, 26. I suddenly realized one day that I actually hadn't needed to use my medication at all. And I'd been on steroid injections and Intel prevention and Ventolin, a lot of different drugs. And I realized that I'd gotten myself well. And then I continued living that way because of course, one of the golden nuggets to remember in life is what you need to do to get well is what you need to do to stay well. So whatever you do to get well, keep doing that and you'll stay well. A lot of the time we go on a health bender and we get well and then we throw it all away and we wonder why we get sick again. It's the same behavior to get well and to stay well. So it took about five years for me and I find now I can teach people how to do it within a year. So generally it takes about a year for most people to get well now to transform their health, whether it's you know weight loss or skin health or high blood pressure or heart disease, um, type 2 diabetes, obesity, all those kind of things that we're suffering from. It generally takes about a year to get well to completely regrow the human body if you want to put the work in. Um, but a couple of things to remember before we get into it today. Uh, one of them is that I'm not a doctor. I'm not a naturopath or a nutritionist. I regularly train doctors and naturopaths and nutritionists. I have my own, I guess, my own health education. Um, and I come from someone who's lived it and walked the talk. Uh, I'm in my mid-50s now. I've got a whole lot of kids. We'll get to it in a minute. Um, but I'm a health researcher, self-cured, self-taught. Uh, I'm a best-selling author. I uh, wrote my first book, uh, Wickle's uh, top five, top 100 selling book. Uh, it was top five for the first three years, I think it was released, uh, and it's one of the top 100 books. And I was, I was writing because the reason I wrote this book simply was so many people, as I was talking, or I was just living my life, so many people would say to me, Jason, you know, you're so irritatingly healthy. You're just so irritatingly healthy. Can you please teach me some of the stuff? And at that point, I didn't have myself as a teacher or a leader or an author at all. I was just doing it because it's so much better to be healthier than not. And I've now had 27 years and I'm 52 now. I've had 27 years of really good health, exceptional health. And I've had 20 years before that, 25 years before that of really bad health with medications every day, being sick every day. So I can speak from experience. It's so much better to be healthy. And one of my passions is to teach and pass this information on because it's so much better to be healthy than to be sick. So anyway, the first book came out of that. People kept saying to me as I was speaking and talking, they kept saying, can you teach this? Why don't you write a book about your experience? And this was just the first book I wrote, which is basically about centenarians we're going to touch on today. Also regular intelligent fasting and my own story. And I wrote that and that became an instant bestseller. We sold out of the first run within two weeks. Um, and it's continued to sell. It's a very successful book around fasting and longevity. Uh, and so then people were asking me, what else do I know? And what else can I teach them? So I then put together my 20 golden rules, which is the other 20 things to do, or rather the other 19 things on top of fasting, to do to give you a long, healthy life, free of drugs and disease. And that's what that's all about. And then my third book came out uh, in 2018 called Feel Great and Live Longer. And that is a, a, like a summary book of a lot of things in a different kind of way, like easy to read kind of way. So that's where the books came from. Uh, number one health uh, book and number one New Zealand author 2015, 2016 year. Uh, and I've spoken now all over the world in the UK, Singapore, America, Canada, uh, Australia, uh, right through New Zealand, of course, on health and longevity. And my website, Jason Sean Bennett, is my gift to the world. It's my legacy project. It's what I'm here to do. And that's where all the free information is. So you can learn about health and longevity and what to do and all that right there on the website. So that's kind of enough about me. Uh, the research and things that I'm going to talk to today uh, there's an enormous amount of research that I talk to and I, I talk from, from the Global Burden of Disease Study, the 351-page World Cancer Report, the EPIC study, of course, which is the European Prospective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition, the World Cancer Research Fund, the famous Framington Heart Study, 
um, the American Institute for Cancer Research. You know, there's a huge amount of research to talk to now. So when I started getting well, there wasn't. Now there is, so it's a real pleasure to be able to present that kind of information. And when we look at my family, I'm very blessed to uh, have a whole bunch of kids. Uh, people call me a prolific baby maker. Um, I've got a wonderful wife, plant-based whole food chef, Tracy Bennett, who is also known as the Reckless Foodie. So if you're looking for inspiration about plant-based cooking, just go to recklessfoodie.com or go to the Reckless Foodie on Facebook or Instagram. You'll find her there. And I've got four kids, of course. Trey is my oldest boy, who's 30. Tove is our daughter at 28. Luke is currently in Germany at the moment in the lockdown. He's 19 and Joel is currently 16. And you'll see there in the picture Hadassah as well, our little bubba, a gorgeous little granddaughter. And Trey gave us our little granddaughter five years ago. She's about to be five, so my granddaughter's about to go to school, which is a strange, crazy thing. But, you know, I'm, I'm very, very blessed with my children. Very, very lucky. And I consider family is the most important thing in the world.